Director of um, the University of Francisco Victoria, Daniel Sada, authorities, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Max Bonilla, and it's a great honor for me to welcome you to the fourth edition of the Expanded Reason Award Ceremony, which takes place in the context of the Expanded Reason Congress on the 25th anniversary of the foundation of the Francisco Victoria University. I also welcome the members of the International Jury, our Rector Daniel Sada, that together with um, Dr. Father Federico Lombardi chaired the jury, Father Paolo Benanti, a Franciscan of the Third Order, professor at the Pontificial Gregorian University, um, Father Javier Prades, Rector of San Damaso, professor. Rafael Vicuña from the Pontifical Catholic University of Chile, and Professor Stefano Samani of the University of Bologna. Some of them are here with us today, others via streaming. Una bienvenida a los ganadores. We are beginning to recover and slowly return to normal. So it is wonderful to have you all here. Para iniciar formalmente esta ceremonia, quisiera invitar a nuestro rector, Daniel Sada. To formally um, start this ceremony, I want uh, our um, rector to give, yeah. say a few words. Good morning. Good afternoon, Max. It falls to me to close the open recent Congress, and before anything else, I would like to thank Professor Luca for being here, and would like him to convey our gratitude to Father Lombardi, who has cooperated during these five years where we have been convening these awards, uh, uh, the Francisco Vittoria University and the Foundation Joseph Ratzinger has been the story of very fruitful collaboration that we dreamt would be fruitful, but I believe God has blessed it beyond our dreams. And a proof of this are the awards, the awardees, and the works that we acknowledge and uh, this Congress. The intention of uh, those awards were to um, work on the intuition or a virus that uh, Benedict the Sixteenth uh, had inoculated on us, namely to try to do something concrete on a problem that we all complain about, but which is difficult to tackle. We all complain about the fragmentation of knowledge, and when Benedict the Sixteenth speaks of an open reason and connecting the different uh, disciplines with philosophy and theology. This is when we thought about um, organizing these awards to try to detect in the world people who are trying to make this effort to make this task, which is uh, very difficult to find, very solitary, but so necessary for the development of knowledge and for the task entailed to universities throughout the world and education in our world. And we found that there are researchers, there are professors who, in their uh, profession, they do this. And a small university with a small foundation decided to rescue this and try to be an excuse or a place for these people to get together so that we all get together and become like the baking powder in such an important work, this fragmentation of knowledge. So it has been very clear in this Congress because we have uh, um, heard um, many people, we have had 
um, different experts from different disciplines of therapies, bear technologies with bioethicists, and all of them with the eagerness to know more, to contrast hypotheses, and build knowledge together all within the framework of a Congress on the status and situation of the human person in contemporary science. I believe many valuable conclusions have been drawn. I'm going to mention them very briefly and probably won't make justice to all the rich things that we have learned, heard these two days. But on the one hand, in the field of uh, university education, the need for an education that goes beyond the transmission of knowledge has been expressed several times. We need an integral formation of students, which has to do with a reason, yes, and also with a feeling, abilities, virtues, character, and spirit. An education that seeks from the heart the encounter with the other, so that passionate communities emerge from, from, from the truth, from the transformation of society, and for the service to the common good. Um, using the third point that uh, James Arthur mentioned, education is transformation. And all of this, as we have witnessed in action, guided by the astonishment of the scientists in the face of the order of the world, the beauty of reality, and the admirable possibility of our ability to know, it has also been insisted that in order to open reason, an attitude of gratitude and humility is required, which is favored by astonishment. Gratitude for the mere fact that there is a reality that cannot be the cause of itself, and humility before its greatness, which far exceeds our capacity for knowledge. We have discussed whether or not we are determined by our mental processes, by social, economic, or cultural currents, in an attempt to understand whether we are free and how this freedom is manifested and educated. We also talked about our biological conditions, about how biotechnology can help people and what risks and ethical and legal limits should be posed to science from the perspective of bioethics and anthropology. In short, we have enjoyed meeting in a university environment in which we have pursued the truth with each other, trying to broaden our reason to open the horizon and always go a little further. And this is what Open Reason is about, in a few words, to go deeper into our own science, to go beyond the data, to understand them and put them in relation with other disciplines, with other points of view, and theology and psychology, more specifically. Now we're going to give, um, to proceed to give the awards, and I want to thank uh, the jury that has been with us for some years. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the Newman Open Reason of our university that has been behind organizing this Congress and to realize, as I was telling Javier Prades, that this is um, not something that is done overnight. You have to sow the seed to reap the fruit in the future. And I believe we are putting the right soil on the ground for the right fruit to grow. And we want to invite and we want to have many professors from many universities and different departments join us. And we want to try on ourselves the medicine itself. We want to inoculate the virus and ask to see if it works. So we're making a strong effort in our university community for the different professors to understand their own specific discipline from this open reason uh, perspective. And we are very aware that this is our mission, and uh, if this can truly change the world and make universities become catalysts of a big change in the world, we have to certainly live it 
and in a very intense way in our own classrooms. So these fruits that we are starting to see and which we hope will be multiplied is enriched and by these awards we um, ask for the support of the awardees for all of this and to the extent we can be catalysts, we can be mediators of this effect of this uh, fruit of the expanded reason of university, we offer ourselves and we are your disposal in whatever we can help other colleagues and other universities and we're going to go straight to the ceremony. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to invite Professor Pierluca Saro to take the word. Thank you, Max. Thanks a lot, dear rector, for giving us this possibility to thank you uh, in the occasion, in this important occasion. By the way, Father Lombardi is health is perfect, and after following the session this afternoon, I have the doubt that his embryo was object of some experiment because with 80 he runs from one end to the other of the city of Rome without rest. So it should have happened something in his younger years. In any way, he served 30 years as a, one of the most uh, um, uh, important cooperators of the Pope. In any case, indeed, as a chief of his community, he has some duties that he has to attend in some moments. I can testify it as a cooperators with him, but uh, the words he asked me to say uh, demonstrate our, the depth of our cooperation. The initiative began uh, six, five, six years ago uh, as a cooperation of the foundation with the University Francisco de Victoria, and from that moment, from that moment, we always have considered this initiative among our most important and uh, primary activities, which are articulated in our statutes from the beginning. The Ratzinger Award, given by Pope Francis, to theologians, but uh, not only since uh, 2020, then the yearly international conferences and the scholarships. In fact, precisely as the rector remembered me some minutes ago, on occasion of 2015 conference prayer force that transformed the world, organized with the University Francisco de Victoria, on occasion of the fifth century of Saint Teresa of Avila, this common project was born and grew and developed. I remember the moment, it was a, a unique moment because we of the foundation didn't know this university, this little university which um, uh, struck us, impressed us because it was like um, an egg Fabergé, a, a, a little incredible rich object. Various disciplines talking together uh, high respect for technical progress without adoring progress like a religion. Respect for science like we heard this, if this afternoon, highly respect for science without becoming scientists. So we were struck and um, some days after the end of the conference, the rector, Padre Florencio and others came to us, to me and said, we have an idea and uh, in a few months, the initiative began. Uh, as you can understand, uh, we consider the idea of expanded reason, the soul of this project, like the rector said a few minutes ago, immensing, immensely inspiring and felicitous. This perspective, typically Ratzingerian, contains in itself a very strong intrinsic dynamism. It pushes human reason further on toward research 
in the dialogue between diverse disciplines, as the rector said, and within unlimited horizons, where reason and faith encounter one another for reciprocal service, and in so doing, continue their journey of walking together in searching and finding the truth. I was impressed uh, this way when I followed the Holy Mass in the chapter that we, uh, were, we, we read the lectures of St. Paul um, evangelizing Macedonia, that is to say Greece. And this is for Ratzinger really a symbol, a, a, an immense, a great symbol because Paul wanted to evangelize the, the East and he always find that obstacles. He w and one day he has a dream and uh, a Macedonian, that is to say a Greek, in, uh, appears him and to says to him, come please to us and save us, help us. And Zratzinger says always this is really the encounter between faith and reason, a faith that needs a reason to remain reasonable, human, not anti-human, and faith that needs reason to maintain itself really truthful, true. Um, as we have seen also this afternoon, our program has become reality, a great reality, thanks to its activity, ac active promotion at many universities in different countries and continents. The name Max Bonilla is known from the Alps to the pyramids, <laughs> which has produced significant interest. And as a great result, a high number of works presented that has allowed the opportunity to select and award works of a very high academic quality. This in turn has facilitated the possibility of building a wide and precious networks of contacts and relations among scholars of different countries and cultures which, despite their diverse specific competencies, have placed in common not only the accumulated results but especially have shared together one and the same exercise of expanded reason. One and the same exercise of expanded reason. We can attest to the fact that the preparation of and the participation in the final phase of work of the jury of this award is always a, always a task which is intellectually fascinating. This is also due to the particular type of a world that is conferred, which places no limits on the wide variety of scientific disciplines, philosophy, medicine, cosmology, psychology, economics, bioethics, the arts, communication, even video games. And all this proceeds within the realm of advanced academic adventures. The choice is perhaps more challenging or difficult, but nonetheless, we leave all the more profoundly the significance and importance of the research by the scientific world and the university, and its dynamism within contemporary culture in our times. More than this, I allow myself to say that the prizes Razona Bierta, the Razona Bierta Awards, uh, embody and reaffirm the significance and the importance and the actuality of being a Catholic university nowadays. For all of this, the Fatigan Foundation Joseph Rack, the Benedict XVI, extend its profound gratitude especially to the, uh, to the University Francisco de Vittoria and its expanded reason institute led by Professor Lacaille Instituto Razona Biert. In fact, thank you to your efforts, we can share a common path, a very qualified and credible path that bears witness to the fact that following the inspiration of Joseph Ratzinger, 
doesn't mean only or even primarily to study his works, but rather to continue studying and researching as co-workers of truth, as is stated in his motto, and as he has exhibited in his life and commitments. Uh, I was impressed, I was thinking this evening when I followed our discussions that uh, the participants are also typically Ratzingerian because they have the characteristics of um, searching a true dialogue. True dialogue means for Ratzinger, as it has said many times, that you recognize in the position of the other a part of truth. And on this base, you uh, discuss with him. So, on the basis of what all, of, of all I, we have, I have said, we of the Foundation, our scientific community, express our deep gratitude to all the award winners for their daily efforts. I believe it is right to add that the positive experience of this award has given us further impetus to launch a similar initiative in Poland, quite analogous even as it has its own distinctive criteria and requirements. At the State University of Nicolaus Copernicus of Torun, the award Ratio et Spes, Reason and Hope, Reason and Science, at the service of hope for humanity. In the earlier years of the expanded Reason Awards, before the pandemic, we were very pleased to host the award ceremony in the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, of which one of its presidents is an eminently qualified member of the jury which grants the award, and also to have facilitated an audience with the Pope. Those were unforgettable experiences, which we really hope can be repeated in the future. And we remain convinced that the expanded Reason Awards is well established and will continue to bear much through it in the years ahead. To conclude, <coughs> we thank all of you here present for your attention and the organizers for their dedicated service and we extend our warmest con congratulations to the newest recipients of this important award. This year, but only this year, the recipients of the, the, the winners will get together with the medal of the Vatican Foundation, also a book um, edited by Padre Lombardi and me on the occasion of the 95th birthday of Pope Benedict XVI. But uh, in my opinion, but uh, Padre Lombardi and, uh, is surely um, agrees with that. It is, only a si it is also a sign that the moment is come in which these communities of the uh, winners of the Pope Benedict Prize and the winners of the uh, uh, Razona Bierda Award can meet together because also the Pope Benedict's Prize is, mu is much more and more becoming interdisciplinary as a confirmation of your intuition. So thanks a lot to all of you and uh, God bless our initiative. Thank you, Professor Azzaro. I am pleased to announce now the winners of the fourth edition of the Expanded Reason Awards. Because of the pandemic, we didn't do it before. In the teaching category for teaching character virtues, a new Aristotelian approach, James Arthur, professor of education and founding director of the Jubilee Center for Character in the University of Birmingham.
¿Es una lucha ingenua el querer recuperar las virtudes y valores en la vida pública y en el mundo profesional? El Jubilee Center para el Carácter y las Virtudes es un centro de investigación interdisciplinario pionero que se centra en el carácter, las virtudes y los valores en aras del florecimiento del ser humano, fundado por James Arthur en 2012. El centro promueve un concepto moral del carácter para explorar la importancia de la virtud en la vida pública y profesional. El centro es un referente destacado en materia de políticas y prácticas en esta esfera y, mediante su amplia gama de proyectos de investigación, contribuye a la renovación de las virtudes del carácter tanto en los individuos como en las sociedades. El proyecto concreto por el que se ha concedido este premio es Teaching Character Virtues and New Aristotelian Approach, que recoge la amalgama de programas de enseñanza iniciados por James Arthur en el centro, desde el internacionalmente reconocido e influyente Framework for Character Education in Schools, hasta el primer máster a distancia del mundo en educación del carácter, que también ha sido elogiado internacionalmente. James Arthur posee numerosos honores académicos y becas, entre los que se incluyen el de profesor visitante de la Universidad de Glasgow, miembro honorario de investigación de la Universidad de Oxford y miembros superior honorario de la Academia Militar de West Point. Además, es presidente de la Sociedad Británica de Estudios Educativos y ha participado en numerosos comités y grupos gubernamentales en materia de educación. Fue nombrado primer director del Instituto Nacional de Investigación de Educación Cristiana por el arzobispo de Canterbury en 2005 y la reina de Inglaterra lo nombró personalmente oficial del Imperio Británico en 2018 por sus servicios a la educación. James Arthur, ganador en la categoría Investigación de la cuarta edición de los Premios Razón Abierta, aporta este gran proyecto educativo impactando directamente en cientos de realidades políticas y sociales en varios países alrededor del mundo. I'd like to accept this award on behalf of the whole Jubilee Center, my whole team. This is not an individual uh, thing. I'm saying my my team have contributed uh, a substantial and significant part to this and I'm very honored that the Expanded Reason Award for Teaching has been given um, to uh, the Jubilee Center. So I would like to thank uh, the organizers Max and the president of the Expanded Reason Award for making this award to the Jubilee Center. I am extremely grateful and humbled by this award and I'd like to thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Professor Arthur. In the research category are the following winners. For the book, Human Embryos, Human Beings, A Scientific and Philosophical Approach, Siblings, Dr. Maureen Conduct and Dr. Samuel Conduct. Maureen Conduct is a, an associate professor of neurobiology at the University of Utah School of Medicine with an adjunct appointment in the Department of Pediatrics. Dr. Samuel Conduct is an associate professor of philosophy in the School of Arts and Sciences and holder of the Cullen Foundation Chair in Business Ethics at the University of St. Thomas in Houston. ¿Cuándo comienza la existencia humana? Human Embryos, Human Beings se basa en la premisa de que los enfoques filosóficos y científicos no están en conflicto y que la comprensión más completa del embrión humano se logra mediante la integración rigurosa de una filosofía sólida con los mejores datos científicos disponibles. Con este fin, además del análisis detallado de la ciencia relevante, el libro también incluye una presentación del hilomorfismo, el punto de vista filosófico empleado por los autores para analizar la cuestión. Samuel y Maureen Condig nos enseñan las profundas implicaciones para nuestra comprensión tanto de la naturaleza de los embriones humanos como de nuestras obligaciones éticas con ellos. Apoyan una visión de hominización inmediata del embrión, es decir, que un ser humano está presente desde el momento de la fecundación en adelante. Maureen Condit fue nombrada miembro de la Pontificia Academia para la Vida, un organismo internacional de asesoramiento científico del Vaticano. En 2018 fue elegida por el presidente de los Estados Unidos para el Consejo Nacional de Ciencias, el cual supervisa la Fundación Nacional de Ciencias y asesora tanto al presidente como al Congreso en cuestiones científicas. Además participa en la educación médica y de posgrado y en ha enseñado embriología humana en la Escuela de Medicina de la Universidad de Utah durante 20 años. Está muy comprometida con la educación pública y la alfabetización científica y ha presentado más de 250 seminarios y entrevistas, tanto a nivel nacional como internacional, sobre su investigación científica, la política científica y la bioética. Samuel Condi, que es profesor asociado de filosofía en la Escuela de Artes y Ciencias y titular de la Cátedra de Ética Empresarial de la Fundación Kalenain. Tiene un doctorado en filosofía y más de 10 años de experiencia laboral en la industria del petróleo y el gas. En el mundo académico ya se encuentra un relato filosófico 
filosófico minucioso y bien razonado de la naturaleza y la vida humana o un análisis científico detallado del proceso de desarrollo humano. Con este libro los hermanos Candid ganan en la categoría investigación de la cuarta edición de los premios Razón Abierta haciendo una gran aportación mediante la integración de ambos elementos necesarios en un solo texto. To receive the award, Dr. Tan, uh, Maureen Kandik will join us. On behalf of myself and my brother, I want to thank the organizers of uh, this prestigious award for honoring our work uh, and recognizing the importance of the human embryo and uh, its nature as a human being. Thank you so much. For the book, What's the Matter? Toward a New Aristotelian Ontology of Nature, Dr. William Simpson, who is a junior research fellow of Waltham College at, at the University of Cambridge and an honorary research fellow at the University of St. Andrews. Professor Simpson was not able to join us tonight or online. ¿Hay más formas en la naturaleza además de la materia? What's the matter? Toward an Aristotelian ontology of nature busca avanzar en un relato general de la estructura de la naturaleza. Su tesis principal se basa en que las formas determinan las propiedades físicas de la materia dotando a los objetos básicos de la investigación científica de sus poderes casuales y fundamentando las leyes de la naturaleza. A diferencia de muchas investigaciones filosóficas de este tipo, su tesis se centra en la búsqueda de un relato de la naturaleza que pudiera explicar cómo es posible la investigación científica llevada a cabo por agentes racionales y encarnados que se apoyan en instrumentos macroscópicos para realizar sus experimentos. El trabajo actual de William Simpson sobre filosofía y la teología de la naturaleza forma parte del proyecto internacional Dios y el libro de la naturaleza. William Simpson, ganador de la cuarta edición de los premios Razón Abierta, nos ofrece con su tesis una concepción realista pero no materialista de la teoría cuántica en la que hay formas en la naturaleza además de la materia. For the book, A Catholic Christian Metamodel of the Person, Integration of Psychology and Mental Health Practice. Doctors Paul Witz, William J. Nordling, and Craig Stephen Titus. Dr. Witz is a senior scholar and professor at the Institute of Psychological Sciences of Divine Mercy University and professor of psychology emeritus at New York University. Dr. William Nordling, is a professor and clinical supervisor at the Institute of Psychological Sciences, the School of Psychology at Uni uh, Divine Mercy University, and Dr. Craig Titus is professor at the Institute for the Psychological Sciences and director of the Department of Integrative Studies at Divine Mercy University. La persona se puede conocer como una unidad o debemos resignarnos a una fragmentación de saberes. El metamodelo cristiano católico de la persona es un ejemplo de la riqueza que surge al poner en diálogo las ciencias psicológicas, la filosofía y la teología para proporcionar un horizonte amplio para la comprensión de la persona. Desde la razón abierta se desarrolla una visión más sistemática, integradora y no reduccionista de la persona, el matrimonio, la familia y la sociedad que la que se encuentran cualquiera de estas tres disciplinas por sí solas. La apuesta de Paul Beach, William Norlin y Craig Steven Titus 
Juventus es proponer un marco unificador para la integración de teorías de la personalidad y modelos terapéuticos ya existentes. Además, busca mejorar la evaluación, el diagnóstico, la conceptualización del caso y la planificación del tratamiento de los pacientes al abordar 11 dimensiones esenciales de la persona necesarias en la práctica de la salud mental orientada a la curación y el florecimiento. El trabajo del Dr. Bitz se centra en la integración de la teología cristiana, especialmente la antropología católica, con la psicología y las rupturas con el secularismo y el relativismo posmoderno. El Dr. Norling es especialista en terapia infantil, matrimonial y familiar. Es ampliamente reconocido como un experto en el área de la terapia del juego y es coautor del galardonado libro de texto Child Center Play Therapy, una guía práctica para desarrollar relaciones terapéuticas con los niños. El Dr. Titus pone el foco de su carrera académica en la teoría de la virtud y la psicología de la virtud, el desarrollo emocional y moral, la resistencia y la virtud y la integración de las ciencias psicológicas, la filosofía y la teología. Poder conocer al hombre en toda su riqueza desde una mirada integradora que busca la verdad del ser humano es un reto apasionante. Estos tres ganadores en la categoría investigación de la cuarta edición de los premios Razón Abierta nos abren una línea de investigación esperanzadora para repensar las teorías de la personalidad y renovar los modelos terapéuticos existentes ampliando los horizontes para comprender la realidad en su totalidad. To receive the award, I invite Dr. Witz to the stage. First of all, I would like to give a really large thank you to all those involved with the Expanded Reason Award, the University of Francisco de Vitoria and the uh, Benedict XVI uh, Institute in Rome. What you are doing is not only important, it is unique, and I think a very creative move in terms of how the intellectual life of the world is going to move in the near future toward the problems that you are outlining and to a greater expansion of reason and a greater, a greater expansion of knowledge uh, being communicated and integrated with each other. And second, I'd like you to please keep in mind my co-authors who were shown there in the video and all the men, other members of the faculty and even some students who were part of the team that developed this model over a 20-year period. Thank you. Those are the winners of the fourth edition of the Expanded Reason Awards. Now I am pleased to announce the winners of the fifth edition. In the teaching category for Science for Seminaries program, Dr. John Slattery, Dr. Kersey Baxter, and Dr. Jennifer Weisman. Dr. Slattery is a senior program associate at Doser, the Dialogue on Science, Ethics, and Religion of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Dr. Baxter is a senior program associate with Dozer and co-manages the Science for Seminaries project. And Dr. Jennifer Weisman is the director of Dozer as well as a senior astrophysicist at NASA.
¿Y si los futuros líderes religiosos tuvieran una base científica sólida para dialogar con el mundo actual? El proyecto Science for Seminars hace esto posible a través de subvenciones para que los seminarios incorporen estudios y resultados científicos modernos con el objetivo de preparar líderes religiosos comprometidos con todos los aspectos de la realidad, en un mundo en el que la ciencia cobra una voz cada vez más fuerte. Por esto presenta las mejores prácticas pedagógicas y formativas y expone a los alumnos a los descubrimientos científicos clave que impulsarán futuros debates filosóficos sobre el conocimiento, la humanidad y la ética. La apuesta de Jennifer Weisman, Catherine Hinman, Josh Slattery y Curtis Baxter es la de llevar a la educación teológica el compromiso científico de vanguardia, fomentando así el diálogo en ciencia y filosofía desde una cosmovisión unitaria para comprender mejor al hombre y el mundo que habita. La trayectoria profesional de Jennifer Weisman pone los ojos en el cielo. Jennifer se ha dedicado a estudiar la formación de las estrellas y los sistemas planetarios mediante telescopios de radio, ópticos e infrarrojos. También tiene otra pasión, es conferenciante y autora y disfruta dando charlas sobre la inspiración de la astronomía y los descubrimientos científicos en escuelas, grupos de jóvenes y de la iglesia y organizaciones cívicas. Catherine Hillman ha puesto la mirada en nuestro planeta Tierra, es experta en ecología y evolución y ha trabajado con comunidades religiosas en cuestiones medioambientales. Además, tiene una gran experiencia pastoral ya que fue pastora de la primera iglesia metodista unida de College Park. En su trayectoria académica, John Slattery se centra especialmente en las interacciones entre el cristianismo y la ciencia, tanto históricamente como en los tiempos modernos. Está especialmente interesado en las intersecciones de la teología de la liberación con las conversaciones actuales sobre sobre ciencia, tecnología y teología. Curtis Baxter es un apasionado del estudio, divulgación y profundización del nexo entre fe y sociedad. Ha trabajado con varias organizaciones que se ocupan del diálogo entre las personas de fe y sus comunidades sobre temas esenciales de nuestra época. Que los futuros líderes religiosos sepan o no de ciencia no es indiferente. Estos cuatro ganadores en la categoría docencia de la quinta edición de los premios Razón Abierta nos abren este camino para redescubrir que todo el mundo tiene que ver con Dios y que Dios tiene que ver con todo el mundo. Se encuentre donde se encuentre. Our apologies for the speed and the low captions. It would be um, it's a great um, training for Spanish uh, speed, speed uh, learning. Thank you so much to the foundation and the university and the institute for this uh, exceptional award. Uh, we've been working with science for seminaries for over a decade now from its inception to where it is now. Um, we want to make sure we thank our, our co-partner in receiving this award, uh, Dr. Katie Hinman, but also the rest of our Dozer team, uh, Rob O'Malley, Rachel Klein, Lila Sloan Barrett, Ophir cohen Simeoff, Leif Kastrin, I think that's our whole team. Ophir. I said Ophir, your turn. And we wouldn't be here without the seminaries that who we partner with, all 54 and other project partners as well, who contributed and made this successful project as well. I would also like to thank uh, the foundation for this expanded Reason Award. It's a great honor for us. I'd like to thank also the leadership of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, its board and its membership for supporting this kind of work, this dialogue and conversation between scientists, ethicists, and faith communities. It's part of our motto of AAAS to advance science and serve society and recognizing that scientists and faith communities have a great common interest in science and technology and using it for great good Um, is a wonderful strength of our, of our uh, scientific society. So I look forward to this kind of work continuing in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now for the research category. The Foundations of Nature and Metaphysics of Gift for an Integral Ecological Ethic, Dr. Michael Dominic Taylor, who is Dean of Students and Teaching Fellow at St. Thomas More College of Liberal Arts.
¿Es posible recuperar en nuestra época moderna la conciencia de que todo lo creado es don gratuito para construir desde ahí el conocimiento y cuidado del mundo que nos rodea? Este libro propone un nuevo fundamento ontológico para los campos de la ética ecológica y la bioética, planteados como dos caras de una misma moneda. La metafísica del don, fundada en el reconocimiento fundamental del don de la existencia, representa el paradigma más amplio posible y más adecuado para apreciar las profundidades de la realidad. Esta propuesta de Michael Taylor se enfrenta al hecho de que prácticamente todo el pensamiento moderno y postmoderno ha perdido la capacidad de mantener unidas tanto nuestra relacionalidad intrínseca con todos los demás seres creados como la unidad radiante de la verdad, la bondad y la belleza de la creación. Los intereses de Taylor siempre se han centrado en la iluminación de la belleza y la maravilla de la creación, tal y como se expresa a través de la ecología, la antropología, la ética y la metafísica, concretamente la metafísica del don participativa. Escribe sobre bioética, ética medioambiental, transhumanismo, solidaridad, economía, ecología integral, teología del cuerpo y metafísica atomista. Michael Taylor es ganador en la categoría de investigación de la quinta edición de los premios Razón Abierta. Su trabajo enfatiza en el don de la existencia compartida por todos convencidos de que una metafísica del don ofrece una visión más profunda y satisfactoria de todas las cosas. Puede restaurar la esperanza de nuestro futuro común, transformar nuestras relaciones con los seres humanos más vulnerables, así como con el resto de la creación, y hablar de todos los aspectos de la existencia humana. Muchísimas gracias a la Fundación Joseph Ratzinger. Thank you very much to the Joseph Ratzinger Foundation and the Francisco Vitoria University. Expanded Reason Awards are a real honor for me. I'm so happy to have this award. My work is a written work that I have taken it. Uh, from the entire Catholic tradition, and I have tried to represent and explain the problems that we have faced in today's world. I'd like to thank my parents and my thesis, PhD thesis director, Pablo Martinez Anguita, who is here, and his wife, Maria Angeles Martin, who is here too. Thank you very much. For the book, What It Means to be Human, The Case for the Body in Public Bioethics. Carter Sneed. Dr. Sneed is professor of law and director of the Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture at the University of Notre Dame. Dr. Sneed was not able to join us tonight. ¿Se puede afirmar que el derecho toma en serio la condición humana con sus límites naturales y su vulnerabilidad intrínseca? What it means to be human? The Case for the Body in Public Bioethics propone un análisis antropológico inductivo destinado a descubrir la visión de la persona que subyace en el derecho. El libro de Carter Smith sostiene que cuando se aplica este modo de investigación antropológica en los conflictos vitales de la bioética surge una visión de la persona como atomizada, solitaria e incapaz de tener en cuenta los factores de la realidad. La apuesta de Carter Smith es la de tener en la base del derecho una concepción de la condición humana encarnada y frágil, sometida al paso del tiempo pero con un destino trascendente, el amor. Sneed es uno de los principales expertos del mundo en bioética pública, es decir, en la gobernanza científica, la medicina y la biotecnología en nombre de los bienes éticos. Su investigación explora cuestiones relacionadas con la neuroética, el perfeccionamiento de la especie, la investigación con embriones humanos, la reproducción asistida, el aborto y la toma de decisiones al final de la vida. La tesis de su trabajo es clara, para que la ley sea verdaderamente sabia, justa y humana debe basarse en esta verdad. El ser humano está hecho para el amor y la amistad. Carter Smith es ganador en la categoría de investigación de la quinta edición de los premios Razón Abierta. I just want to express my profound gratitude um, to the University of Francisco Vitoria and the Joseph Ratzinger uh, Benedict XVI Vatican Foundation, all of the 
people who work at the Expanded Reason Awards and the Institute for, uh, I'm just so honored and humbled that the book was recognized um, and, and received the award. Uh, it's a great validation of, uh, of, of what I was trying to accomplish, which is to say to, to open up vistas of, of reason beyond narrow disciplines to bring into conversation different disciplines, science, philosophy, law, social science, public policy, all together oriented towards a fundamental human question about what it means to be a human being and flourish as a human being um, and what we owe to each other uh, in terms of not just human identity, human dignity, but also the common good. And I'd like to congratulate my, my wonderful colleagues who were also whose work was also recognized uh, by the Expanded Reason Awards. And I'm sorry that I'm not able to be with you in person. Uh, we have a new baby in our family, which is a great blessing. Um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be together someday soon. And, uh, and I just wanted to let you all know how profoundly grateful I am for your recognition. For the book, Chasing After Virtue, Neuroscience, Economics, and the Biopolitics of Morality, Dr. Jeffrey Bishop, Dr. Andrew Mitchell, and Dr. Therese Lysot. Dr. Jeffrey Bishop holds the Tenet Endowed Chair in Bioethics and is Professor of Philosophy and of Theological Studies at St. Louis University. Dr. Andrew Mitchell is a, is a clinical doctor, MD, educator, and scholar. Mitchell currently serves as Assistant Professor of Psychiatry at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. And Dr. Therese Lysot, is Professor of Moral Theology and Healthcare at the Neiswanger, Neiswanger Institute for Bioethics and Healthcare uh, Leadership at the Stritch School of Medicine, Loyola University, Chicago. To receive the award will be Dr. Lysart. ¿Qué hace falta para liberar no solo a la neurociencia, sino a la ciencia contemporánea en su conjunto de la economización y los compromisos político-filosóficos de la era neoliberal para reorientarla hacia una ciencia más humana? Los autores de Biopolitics After Neuroscience se dan cuenta de que el modelo de comportamiento moral en neurociencia era, de hecho, el mismo modelo de comportamiento económico. Al rastrear estos modelos de comportamiento humano en la neurociencia de la moral desde la revista científica hasta la neurociencia popular demuestran el imaginario social y moral que da forma a las cuestiones científicas. Argumentan que la búsqueda de la neurociencia de la moralidad se encuentra en un largo linaje de pensamiento y racionalidad que traza sus raíces a través del neoliberalismo de Becker, Friedman y Neit a la ciencia social positiva de Joan Stuart Mill y al empirismo de Ben Hamrick. Ricardo, Malthus y Townsend encontrando su fundamento en el escepticismo de David Hume y Francis Bacon. Jeffrey Bishop, Andrew Michel y Theory Slice descubrieron que la neurociencia de la moral era una sutil fusión de dos ciencias distintas, la neurobiología y la ciencia humana positiva, cada una con sus propios enfoques, metodologías, modelos y teorías. Más aún descubrimos que en el corazón de la neurociencia de la moral se encuentra un modelo de comportamiento humano que era delgado, frágil, escaso y macilento, una antropología derivada del linaje del Homo economicus. Bishop actualmente está trabajando en un libro en la intersección de la ética y la metafísica y otro en la filosofía de la tecnología. Publica diversos artículos en revistas de ciencias médicas, humanidades médicas, filosofía y teología, así como artículos sobre cultura pop, teología y filosofía. También es el director fundador de la International Academy for Bioethical Inquiry. La investigación de Michel se ha centrado en la interfaz de la filosofía, la teología, la espiritualidad contemplativa y la psiquiatría clínica. Sus iniciativas académicas se basan en el compromiso clínico diario con veteranos que sufren una serie de experiencias afectivas negativas, incluidas las condiciones psiquiátricas relacionadas con el trauma, la adicción y los trastornos del estado de ánimo y la cognición. Iris Laisad es profesora de Teología Moral y Asistencia Sanitaria en el Instituto Nishwanger de Bioética y Liderazgo Sanitario de la Escuela de Medicina Struis de la Loyola University Chicago. Su trabajo académico pone en diálogo los campos de la teología, la medicina, la bioética y la salud global. Hacer la ciencia más humana, con toda la hondura y rigor que esto conlleva, es lo que proponen estos tres ganadores de la categoría investigación de la quinta edición de los premios Razón Abierta. Huh. <sighs>
Wow, that was a great video. Um, thank you again um, to uh, the Benedict XVI Foundation, the University of Francisco de Vitoria, the Expanded Reason Institute, and especially to the jury for all the work that you did and for selecting us from just such an extraordinary pool of um, applicants, not only the people who are here who uh, are humbling to be among, but um, even the list of, of, of the other um, folks who submitted. I am, uh, of course, accepting this on behalf of Jeff and Andy, and especially these last two days. I'm so sorry that they're not here. Um, I often tell my students, you know that God is active in your life when you go to places you would never anticipate and you are given gifts you would never imagine. Um, and we could never have anticipated this when we started out, we embarked on this project. Um, I don't think we could have anticipated how deep, uh, what great friends we would become because when we started out we didn't actually know each other very well. But I also never would have anticipated meeting a community of people who take these questions so seriously and at such a high academic level and to find an institution that is actively practicing having conversations at this intersection and trying to advance this, um, this interface both for faculty and for students. So I have just felt extraordinarily gifted this, these last two days. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Max. <laughs> the jury also selected an honorable mention in the research category. Dr. Christopher Kasuk, The Gospel of Happiness, How Secular Psychology Points to the Wisdom of Christian Practice. Dr. Kagzor is Professor of Philosophy at Loyola Marymount University. ¿Qué tienen que ver la psicología positiva y la tradición cristiana? Al igual que la metafísica aristotélica proporcionó una nueva base para la teología natural de la época de Tomás de Aquino, también la psicología positiva proporciona una base para una teología moral natural en nuestro tiempo. Este libro reúne los hallazgos empíricamente verificables de la psicología positiva que muestran la sabiduría de la tradición cristiana. Las advertencias cristianas sobre los peligros de la avaricia, la codicia de los bienes del prójimo y el orgullo encuentran una verificación empírica. Christopher Cazor se adentra en la psicología positiva y se da cuenta de que esta corriente, considerada hoy en día moderna, tiene fundamentos que promueve la tradición cristiana desde hace más de 2000 años. La importancia del perdón, la gratitud, la humildad y el servicio al prójimo como pilares de una psicología sana. Por otro lado, la psicología positiva también puede ser un servicio para los creyentes cristianos, ayudándole en sus luchas contra la fuerza de voluntad, proporcionándoles nuevas motivaciones para la oración y ayudándoles a identificar sus puntos fuertes característicos. Actor es un apasionado del ser humano en sus diferentes facetas y un gran divulgador. Ha escrito más de 100 artículos académicos y 16 libros sobre el sentido de la vida, la bioética, el matrimonio, el aborto, antropología filosófica, personalismo y ley natural, entre otros. Este trabajo presenta cómo la psicología reivindica la sabiduría de las enseñanzas cristianas y cómo esta puede ser de gran ayuda para la lucha diaria de los creyentes. Sin embargo, Cactor, mención de honor de la quinta edición de los premios Razón Abierta, concluye que es una locura pensar que incluso lo mejor de la psicología puede sustituir al cristianismo. Thank you very much for giving me this award. I wish I could be with you to celebrate together and to honor also the other people who have received awards. It is a great pleasure to uh, receive award, especially for this book, The Gospel of Happiness. I uh, worked on this for really a number of years and it arose out of a kind of a personal crisis for me. I had been going through uh, grave difficulties in my life. I just had to move and I really missed my friends in the place where I was living before. 
And so I really searched for ways to augment uh, my own happiness. And I discovered this whole new field of positive psychology. And the more I read in positive psychology, the more I realized that the insights and the recommendations that they were giving uh, really were compatible with and augmented uh, my own Catholic faith. And so what I saw in this development of positive psychology was something like what Thomas Aquinas saw in the Middle Ages when he discovered Aristotle. I saw a, a vindication on the basis of reason of many of the teachings uh, of the church. And so what I try to do in this book is bring together insights from contemporary secular psychology and show how they're very much in harmony with, compatible with, and supportive of traditional Christian practices, like forgiving people that offend you, like being grateful for all the gifts of your life, and like making time to serve and love others. And so I'm very grateful to the committee that has given me this award. And I wish I could be with there to with you to celebrate uh, everything together. But I do am I'm also grateful for the opportunity to at least uh, in this video, express my thanks and my gratitude uh, for receiving this reward. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate it. These constitute the winners of the fifth, ed fifth edition of the Expanded Recent Awards. Congratulations to them in the fourth edition. In order to maximize the network of Expanded Recent scholars around the world, we are now doing the Expanded Recent Awards every two years. So we invite scholars around the world to participate in the sixth edition of the Expanded Reason Awards, which close in March 2023 at expandedreason.org, premiosrazonabierta.org. Esto concluye la ceremonia de los premios Razón Abierta. This concludes the ceremony of the Expanded Reason Award. Now we invite you to a cocktail. Thank you very much. <laughs>